Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai. Call Halal La Yahawa Bashim Yahawa Shai, which is Hebrew for Bless Yahawa, Bless Yahawa Shai. All praises to the Father Yahawa in the name of the Son Yahawa Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect that scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the Brother Ties of War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And I'm just back here uh, again, you know, with a quick lesson. You know, I was at the, this football field and um, I was meditating on the lesson. And um, I was observing and I was watching the coaches, you know, uh, put the kids to work, you know. And these are young kids out here for Pop Warner. And um, one thing that came in mind, you know, they was doing hitting drills and and uh, he was, you know, being a coach, you know. And one thing that came to mind was endurance, you know. As the same as you you was motivated when if you play sports, you know, like these kids out here, they they having a hard days of practice. Coach get putting them at hitting drills and things like that. The key thing is endurance, you know, making it through the practice. It's a tough practice. It's a, uh, it's tough, but you have to endure. And um, I'm just comparing that to being in this truth because while you in this truth you know we got to constantly endure man you know constantly man all right so i got a uh scripture here that i wanted to bring out and uh just just tie into the situation all right this is uh sirach chapter 2 and verse 1 it says my son if thou come to serve the lord prepare thy soul for temptation I'm going to read that again. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Because while you're in this truth, Satan is going to tempt you. So I just want to do a quick Google search on the word temptation. And it says, Temptation, the desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. So when Satan is tempting you, you know, he's tempting you so that you can what? Do something wrong or unwise, you know? Because, you know, someone may get over on you. Someone may, you know, uh, uh, do wrong unto you. And in this sinful flesh that we in, in this carn carnal nature that we was raised in, you know, you will want to do something back. You know, you want to get, you know, get them back. But the scriptures tell us that vengeance belongs unto the Lord, man. And we're catching hell day by day, man. Paul said we are killed all the day long, you know. But we're more than conquerors through him that love us, man. So it says the desire to do something, especially something wrong or unwise. It says desire, urge, itch, impulse, inclination. It says a thing or course of action that attracts or tempts someone. All right, just like a wicked ass woman, you know, she can tempt you to putting your hands on it. And guess what? As soon as you do such an unwise thing, you know, now you're in a world of trouble. Police are called on you and things of that nature. You know, I'm just using that as an example because Satan is always near among the sons of Israel. It says um, the thing or course of action that attracts or tempts someone. It says uh, this is a synonym. It says lore. Allurement, uh, excuse me, allure, allurement, enticement, seduction, attraction, draw, pull, invitation. All right. So these are the uh, words, you know, which you should understand behind the word temptation. You know, now let me get back to the scripture. This is Sirach chapter two and one. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord. Prepare thy soul for temptation. So we got to prepare. You come into this truth, you got to prepare for the worst. You got to get your mind right. You know, like the brother, the brother, he got his channel called Get Your Mind Right. All right. And uh, that's true. Your mind got to be right. You got to pray. You know, you got to count the cost. You got to understand what you into. You got to understand what you believe. It says, uh, verse 2. It says, Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. All right. So I want to go into the quick Google search 
on, on the word constantly. Just like these young soldiers out here, but these little football players, you know. I'm just using that as an example. They was out here getting it in. And they had to endure through hardness, man. So how much more us, which is soldiers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We got the best job in the world. And the hardest job in the world. You know? It says um, the word constantly, quick Google search. It says continuously over a period of time, always. Okay, so going back to the scripture, it says, uh, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. So we got to continuously always endure no matter what odds are, are, are pressed against us, you know, or what, what barrier gets in our way. Let me go back to that word for the word constantly. All right. It says continuously over a period of time, always. Uh, let's see here. Uh, synonyms, always, all the time, um, the entire time, continually, um, continuously, persistently, repeatedly, regularly. All right. So we regularly got to endure. We regularly got to gotta fight, man. It's all about fighting. It says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. It says, and make not haste in a time of trouble. You know, because that's when you're being tried, when a time of trouble come resting upon you, man. And you got to make a decision. You know, you're going you're gonna to fold, you're going to run, you're going to uh, not have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, you're going to make your own, you're going to lean upon your own understanding. Or are you going to just sit and, and, and wait for the Lord to make a way for you to escape? Or are you going to endure, all right, through the affliction? Now, this is verse 3. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the last end. Because the last end is the time of Jacob's trouble, man. You know, that's the last end in which we're going to live in this God-forsaken, wicked homosexual sinful kingdom man all right because Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is calling us back you know this time that we're living in this society is is is, is a time of our captivity and the Lord have loosened the cap captivity for the prophets to prophesize the Lord is calling us back that's the whole matter you know someone would say well how do you know this person has said before you know you know uh how do you know the Bible's real I told you because prophecy, man. Prophecies, man. Um, excuse me. Let me get back to the scripture. It says, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. All right, because at the very end, we're all gonna be tried, man. We're gonna be tried, man. All right. You know, especially when the hours of temptation may the Lord exempt us from them hours, man, and feed us. Verse 4: Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. And that word estate means condition. Condition. So when you're changed to a low condition. Right now, brothers, some brothers are in a low condition, man. You know? So right now, some brothers are in a low condition. But it's going to be a very, very low condition when you can't eat. You can't buy. All right? You can't, uh, uh, you know, go into the supermarket and get you some water and some bread and some grapes or whatever the case may be. You know, we're all going to be changed into a low estate, man. It says, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, man. So you see, the Lord is, is telling us through the scriptures and comforting us on, on our walks in his truth, you know, and the things we got to get through. It says, for gold is tried in the fire. It says, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So the Lord is going to see if we men, if we those real men. Through adversity, man. It says, believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. And that's and that's a key word, man. That's a powerful word, trust. You know, you may not trust your woman. You may not trust family members. But guess what? You can trust Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right? It says, believe in him. That's another key word and a powerful word. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way upright and constantly endure. So you got to order your way upright. You got to be willing to set your ways and how you manage yourself in a righteous manner, man. 
You got to order your way up right. You got to want to do right. You know, even when you're being tempted, you got to want to do right. It says, and trust in him. Verse 7, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. And that's another key word, fear. That's a powerful word. It says, ye that fear the Lord, wait. Another key word, the word wait. All right. Wait for his mercy. All right. Because the Lord is always on time, man. It says, and go not aside, lest you fall. Because if you lean upon your own understanding and make your own decisions and think you could do, you think you got it, and you're not waiting upon the Lord, all right, then guess what? You're leaning upon your own understanding and you're going to fall, man. It says, um, verse 8, ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for the everlasting joy and, and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? All right. When did the Lord despise a man that called upon him? See, when we all wish to call upon the Lord, the Lord took his name away from us, man. And now the Lord has given us back because he won us back. All right. We're on, we're on the time clock of the Lord, man. This is his movie. All right. This is his movie, man. It says, or did any abide in the, his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? And how do we how can we call upon the name the, the Lord today? It's by the name, man. That's why that name is very important. The name of the heavenly father is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Excuse me. It says, verse 11, for the Lord is full of compassion and, and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in a time of affliction. So when we're holding fast our faith toward Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah and giving all that we can give and, and rehearse the righteous acts and um, uh, uh, to the best of our ability, the Lord, the Lord is what? He shows compassion and mercy, man. It says he's long suffering and very pitiful and forgive of sins and save it in a time of affliction, man. You know, because it's going to come a time of great affliction when Esau and his uh, his contractors be sent out. You know, some of us, the scriptures say, shall be cast into prison. You know, hey, being as a pilgrim is going to be hard, but it's going to be all right because oh, we have Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. All right. Because he saveth in the time of affliction. It says, Woe be to the fearful the fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Alright, so if you fall away, that's that's your ass, man. The most high ain't defending you. You crucify the Lord again, man. It's like spitting in the Lord's face after the Lord have you taste of the heavenly gift, you know? It says, woe unto him that is faint hearted. God getting tired, don't want to teach. It says, for he, um, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. All right. And this is why we rehearse the law. All right. We try to do the best we can by keeping it to the best of our ability, man. It says, verse 17, they that fear the Lord will prepare his hearts and humble their souls in his sight. Saying he will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy, man. And it tells you in Peter, the Lord's the Lord uh, ears is all open unto the righteous, man. All right. He hears the righteous prayers. So we doing what it takes. Guess what? The Lord is there, man. And you know some too. I was watching the elder, uh, elder Manatazak. You know, he did a beautiful show and he made mention on how a brother put him, put, put, put him on, you know, and, and spotted the chariots at their camp. And that was, that's the elders out there in um, Connecticut, man. So you had the, you had chariots at, the apostles camp, you had chariots at their camp, we had chariots at our camp, you know. Hey, and he said, he also said too, you know, there's gonna be more sightings, man. 
you know, and that's true. And that just shows that, look, the Lord is with us, man. Those are the signs in the heavens the Lord has given to us. He's given us that. He's given us more faith, man. The Lord is ready to make a move, man. This place is over with, man. You know, I use this football field and I use this practice of these kids because I heard the guys talk about endurance. And I said, that's the lesson, man. You know, we got to endure all the way to the end, man. All right. So, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying. Get on out of here. Wrap this thing up. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.